We're going to spend a few minutes here doing a little bit of hex practice together and then I want to give you a time-saving, money-saving, and Cisco exam point-saving tip that will really help you out with your hex conversions. Nothing magic, but it's a very valuable tip. But first, let's do a little conversion. Now when it comes to one-digit hex, if you're converting that to decimal, you know, that's either going to be 0 through 9 or one of these six letters. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15. If you see any G's or anything beyond that, you know, they're giving you some kind of illegal value just to see if you know what's going on with hex. And that's simply, the, that one digit hex, you're dealing with units of one. So if you were just given C and you were asked, you know, convert that to a decimal, well, it's going to be 12. It's 12 units of 1. Now, with two-digit hex, left to right, you have units of 16 and units of 1. If you want to go from right to left and say, okay, units of 1 and then 16 times 1, which is 16, that's fine. I just think it's easier just to remember left to right. we got units of 16 and units of 1. So let's say that I gave you A7. Sounds like a bingo call, except, of course, there is no A in bingo. Uh, so left to right, we have units of 16 and units of 1. Does the case matter? If I gave you an uppercase A and a 7 there, does it affect it at all? No, it does not. And they could even be particularly devilish and give you like a three-digit hex character, and we're getting to those, where one letter is in uppercase and one letter is in lowercase, trying to throw you a little bit. But it's not going to throw you because you know the case doesn't matter. So let's see what we have there. We have A units of 16, which means 10. So we have 10 units of 16. Right there, we know the A represents 160 in decimal. The 7 represents 7 units of 1. So that's 160 plus 7, and that is 167. See, it's simple. First time you do it, it's like, okay, you know, the light bulb goes off. Now, let's just do one more while we're here. Let's say that I gave you um, 4B. What decimal does that convert to? If I have 4 units of 16, what do I have? I have 64. Then, let me put a space there. I have B units of 1. So B equals 11. That means I have 11. And that means I have 75. Nothing to it. Two-digit hex, absolutely nothing to it. Now let me go over, I'm going to type over this a bit and put in three-digit hex because left to right we have units of 256, 16, and 1. 256, 16, and 1. If you're going from right to left, it's 1 and then 16 times 1, which is 16 and then 16 times 16, which is 256. Again, I just think it's easier to remember it is 256, 16, once kind of thing. You write it out a couple of times, <clears throat> pardon me, write it out a couple of times, it becomes second nature. So let's say I gave you A52. A52 is the value we're looking at. If I asked you to convert that to decimal, what does that give you? And I'll wait a few seconds here. If you want to pause the video, that's fine too. So we have A units of 256, which is 10 times 256, which is 2560. We have 5 units of 16, which is what? I know what it is. <laughs> it's 80. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's 80. My voice is going all of a sudden. And then we have 2 units of 1 which is 2, so 2560 plus 80, that gives you 2640, and then 2 on top of that, 2642, and I do believe that is the correct answer. Yes, so it's A52. So again, case doesn't matter. A through F could be lowercase, could be uppercase. I could have given you a lower and an upper there in the three-digit hex, and it would not have affected the value one little bit. I could have given you this instead, you know, A5F. And again, that's just going to be 15 right there. So that would be 95. So I believe that would be 2655. I sure hope so. And that's exactly what it would be. Now, just one more thing here before we move forward. And I'm going to let you practice this one on your own too. 
I want you to practice all these on your own after this because this isn't enough. You want it to be second nature on exam day. If you get a four-digit hex value, <clears throat> pardon me, if you get a four-digit hex value, which I really can't imagine them giving you on the exam, but then you're dealing with units of 4,096, 256, 16, and 1. And that, of course, is from left to right. Again, I don't know if they would ever give you a four-digit hex value, but at least this way you know exactly what's going on with it. All of your hex to decimal conversions are really just that simple. And I'm actually going to follow this video, and we'll do a little going the other way. We'll go with the decimal, uh, and we'll go to hex. But what I want to impress upon you right now is you don't need to sit down and do you know 90 minutes of these conversions at a time. You don't need to do that. If you can do it, great. But I would go googly-eyed if I just did, you know, hex and decimal conversion, conversions for 90 minutes. What I strongly suggest to you is when you have those few minutes, and everybody's got a few minutes, okay? I'm not telling you to goof off from work, but if you are taking a break or something like that, you know, you don't need to take your phone. You don't need to take your laptop. You don't need to take anything with you to practice this skill except something to write with and something to write on. As a matter of fact, you don't want to get in the habit of using a calculator for anything on your CCNA exam because the calculator will be disabled when you go in to take the exam. You won't be able to use it. So you definitely want to be able just to write it out very quickly. But five minutes here, 10 minutes there, it does not need to be a marathon hex conversion uh, deal. Okay, if you want to do that and you can do it, that's great. But I think you'll be much better off if you just said, you know what, five minutes a day, five minutes a day, we all waste five minutes. Five minutes a day you spend on this between now and your CCNA exam, and anything they ask you on that exam is going to be cake. And that goes for the subnetting we're going to do later. We've got some more complicated conversions coming in there. But again, once you practice it, you will nail it. Because it's not about, you know, just doing it on exam day. It's like, you know, it's like an NFL game. It's like any major league sporting event. You know, the players don't just show up that day and say, hey, okay, I think I'll go out there and play. They're practicing all the time. And then when it kind of turns, comes time to play, whether it's a sporting event or you're playing in an orchestra, it's all second nature. You're not even thinking about it. That's where you want to get with this stuff. You don't want to be the person cramming with it out in the car before they go take the exam. You want to be that person who shows up with the attitude of, I'm already a CCNA. I'm just here to make it official. That's what it's all about. So one more video to follow this one. We will do some decimal to hex conversions, and then we'll be off to the next section.